everyone, my name is Kristen Allen and I work for the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. The Dixon is an art museum in Memphis and we have 17 acres of gardens that are beautiful all year round. In January of 2021, we'll be hosting a new exhibition at the Dixon called America's Impressionism, Echoes of a Revolution. This exhibition will feature art made by artists that lived right here in America, just like you and I, and painted in the Impressionist style. Impressionism features art that focuses more on a feeling of a place or a person than it does on making it look super realistic. Impressionist art often has really bright colors and lots of bold brush strokes. Let's look closely at four of the paintings that are in the exhibition and see if we can spot what they all have in common. This painting is called View of the Seine, looking toward Notre Dame, and it was painted by Henry Osawa Tanner. Tanner was born in Pennsylvania in 1859. Tanner was one of the first African-American artists to gain worldwide fame for his work. He was the only black student at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art where he studied. He fought against racism his whole life in America, and as an adult, he moved to Paris where people were more accepting, and that's where he spent the rest of his life. This painting is of the Seine, the major river that runs through Paris. Many of Tanner's paintings focus on one color, and as you can see, blue is very prevalent in this work of art. Although this is a beautiful example of a landscape, Tanner is most known for his paintings of everyday life. The next two pieces I wanted to show you are both by an artist named John Henry Twachtman. This painting is called The Little Bridge. Twachtman was born in Ohio in 1853, but he studied art in Europe, which was very common at the time. Once Twachtman returned to America, he bought a farm in Connecticut and spent much of his time painting landscapes there. He had a small waterfall on his property that he painted time and time again during different seasons and different times of the day. This next painting is called From the Holly House and is also a painting of Connecticut. Twachtman died when he was just 49 years old, but his landscape paintings are still highly valued by museums and art collectors today. Last, let's take a look at this painting by artist Mary Cassatt. This painting is called Lydia Sitting on a Porch Crocheting. Cassatt was born in 1844 in Pennsylvania. Cassatt was one of the few women of her time to make art her career, and even her own family did not support her choice. She moved to Europe in her early 20s and spent most of her life there. She loved to create portraits of women in their day-to-day -day lives and is very famous for her paintings and pastel drawings. She fought for equal rights for women, especially for the right to vote, and her paintings give a glimpse into the real lives of other women, especially focusing on mothers. She painted and drew most of her life, and she only stopped when she had basically gone blind. Her art is still shown in museums all over the world. Did you notice what all four of these paintings had in common? They were all paintings made of the outside. They were landscapes, but they also all had bridges. Some are easier to see than others. But today, we're going to be inspired by bridges to create our own work of art. Bridges can be built over water, railroad tracks, valleys, or basically any obstacle, but there are lots of different kinds. Bridges have to be strong enough to hold the weight of the people and the cars that they carry, but also to withstand extreme temperatures, high winds, and even earthquakes. Engineers take a lot into account when they're deciding what type of bridge is best like the land they're building on, how long the bridge needs to be, and how much weight it needs to carry. Bridges are very strong, not only because of the materials we use, like steel and iron, but also because of those designs put in place by the engineer. One type of bridge is called a suspension bridge, where the deck of the bridge, that's the part that you walk or drive on, is suspended or held by cables or rods from the tall pillars above. A beam bridge is the oldest and simplest type of bridge. It has a support on each end, and the deck is balanced in between. This could be as simple as a log that you walk across trying to get across a creek. A truss bridge is similar and uses two supports on each end, but it also uses a framework of bars made to connect to the two ends. Truss bridges usually use triangle shapes in the bars because triangles are a really strong shape. And another strong shape is the arch. An arched bridge is another very old type of bridge. An arched bridge uses curved supports underneath the deck of the bridge. These are often used over rivers or valleys. There are so many different kinds of bridges and these are just a few of them. Now that we know a little bit more about the types of bridges, let's use them to create a work of art. Today I'll be showing you how to make an island collage. First, let's grab our supplies. We'll need some paper, preferably in a variety of colors a pair of scissors, some glue, 
and something to draw with. If you don't have all of these supplies, you can just get a piece of paper and something to color with and make a drawing instead of a collage today. The first step is to sketch out our islands. I'm using green paper, but you can use whatever color paper you have. Or, if all you have is white paper, you can color it first and then sketch your island shapes. I'm using kind of an oval shape and I'm going to make three islands. Once you get your islands sketched out, you can cut them. So I took a piece of brown paper and I sketched out an oval that was just a little bit bigger than the green shapes I had already made. Then I cut them out and glued them underneath my green ovals. I turned my paper over so that the pin marks would be on the back and wouldn't show. step is to glue your islands onto a larger piece of paper. If you want it to look like your islands are surrounded by water, you can glue them onto a blue piece of paper, or use a white piece of paper and color it to look like the ocean. But you can really use any paper you want. If you glue them onto red paper, it might look like your islands are surrounded by lava, or you might draw spikes. Get creative! Next up is my favorite part of the project. You get to imagine the kind of people that would live on your islands. Sketch out a house for every island and the character that you think lives in that house. You might do an animal or a person or a monster. It's totally up to you and you can create whatever kind of island village you like. and drew my characters, I colored them in and cut them out. Then I glued them on top of the island that I wanted them to live on. using bridges. That way our islanders can visit one another. You might be inspired by the bridges that we learned about earlier, or you might be an engineer today and create a bridge design that no one has seen before. You can use scrap pieces of paper to sketch out your bridge, then cut it out and glue it down in between your islands. I did a beam bridge, a suspension bridge, and an arched bridge for my design, but it's up to you what you want to make.
The last step is to go back and add any final details you might want, like boats in the water, airplanes, or details on your bridge or island. And that's it! You've got a really fun island that you can show off and some super cool bridges so that it's all connected. I hope you enjoyed learning about the America's Impressionism exhibition that's opening at the Dixon Gallery and making your own island collage. We'd love to see what you made. You can use the hashtag Dixon at Home or Discover the Dixon and tag the Dixon on Facebook or Instagram so we can see your creation. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of the fun activities we put out weekly. Thanks so much. I hope you have a great day and keep creating.